trying to think if there's anything else to ask you. Um, no, I think we're good. I'm excited for it. Thanks for letting us do this. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll watch for the recording from you as well as the, the list afterward. And we can yeah. coordinate that. So perfect. Um, can you do me a favor and share your screen with, or make, make me the presenter? I just want to say, and I'll give, you the, I'll sure. give it back to you. I just want to see. I've got two screens, and I want to make sure I'm going to show the correct one. Yeah, I mean, I don't even um, mind if you want to. If you want to, oops, I think I'm sharing my screen now. You're all right. Uh, <laughs> um, it, you can just have it right from the start, and I'll just kind of do an intro. I'll, you know, do the two minutes. Okay, I'll leave it on my title end, slide. Recording and okay, and then it, just leave it in your in your court. Uh, How many employees do you guys have up there now? Uh, there's 16 to 18 of us, depending on you know okay. what sort of projects are going on. All right, so making presenter. Yes. All right. Let's All right. See. So yeah, it's over to you. Yeah, you're sharing now, just so you know. My, you see my deck, or what do you see? I see your deck. Yeah, I see the PowerPoint open. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. weird. Now, how can I switch that? You got like the notes or something? Yeah, I don't know what this is. Uh, so on my other screen, it's showing the actual deck. Huh. I need to figure this out real quick here. I hate stuff like this that I can't figure out. Uh, let me try one other thing. Now I see your kids. <laughs> so you're seeing that. Are you just hitting present? Yeah, I'm hitting. But so what it's doing, I've got two screens. Yeah. And on my main screen, this is what's showing, what you're seeing. But on my other screen, the actual deck is showing. Can you select that from the, like, you know, under the show my screen? And you can select which screen to share within the GoToWebinar? Oh. You know what? I didn't even know you could do that. There you go. You're my hero. You're my hero. <laughs> That's you what I'm here for. Literally, are my hero. <laughs> I have low standards for heroes. <laughs> hey, I'm happy to be a hero. All right, good. All right, looks like we're good then. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, so right Perfect. at right on the hour, I'll do the two minute thing or around two minutes, and and then uh, we'll we'll take it from there. So we'll get rolling, and we've done this before, so I think it should go well. <laughs> I'm uh, looking forward yeah. to it. Awesome. Yeah, it should be good. should be good. So, perfect. Anything else? Any final thoughts from me? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I was just going to ask about the brand stuff, but that's kind of my, my uh, yeah, um, personal. You know, it's been, it's been a crazy couple months. We, um, we acquired, are you familiar with Call Source, call tracking company? Yeah, I remember you guys, because you acquired them and was who acquired Mongoose? Was that Dialog Tech? I always get you guys confused. Yeah, they acquired Mongoose. You guys did a similar thing. Source. And then you rebranded. Right. Yeah, then we rebranded. Then we announced some funding. So it's been a wild couple yeah. months. Well, I was thinking about for a so, ring partner, like if it's time to do like an update of the brand or something. And I thought, oh my God, that's so much work. Dude, it's so much work and it's so expensive. Yeah. And it is. Oh, we just kind of had to. Log My Calls is a pretty limiting name. Right. Um. And it didn't really describe fully what we do and what we want to do. Right. So. Yeah, you need something that's well, we more all-encompassing. Like exactly. So we kind of felt like we had to do it. Um, cool. No, it looks it looks good. I was actually pretty impressed with how sort of seamlessly it came together because it was right after that I saw you guys had a booth somewhere and it's like, oh wow, they've already got the booth and everything. So, and the website. So. Yeah. Yeah. We've we had to kind of make everything, make sure everything, you know, fell in line with one another. Yep. So, all right. Well, I'm gonna uh, sort of uh, intro, but just sort of announce the two-minute warning, and then we'll uh, be ready to go. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar with Ring Partner and Converza on why call, dur call duration is a bad measure of lead quality. Uh, we'll dive right into things shortly, but. Uh, for now, we're just going to wait a couple minutes to wait for some more uh, 
uh, people to log in and uh, we'll be ready to get down and uh, get this going. So please hang in there. All right, I think we're uh, ready to, to get going. Uh, I'm really excited to hear what uh, McKay, our, our guest, has to, to talk about here today uh, on why call duration is bad measure of lead quality. Uh, and just before we get into it, though, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping things. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ringpartner, as well as on our blog. Uh, and I will likely email that out to everyone uh, shortly after the webinar so it will be recorded uh, and as far as questions go please feel free to uh, ask them as we go and I may interject and uh, interrupt uh, McKay as we go and sort of uh, pose those questions so we can get a really good value out of this webinar and then there will be a, a Q&A session uh, at the end so feel free to hold on to those as well but um, you know enter those questions in and we'll be sure to answer them uh, and I'm your host uh, my name is Mike I am the VP of uh, what I like to call VP of Make It Ring at Ring Partner here. Uh, so um, we are, are broadcasting from uh, Victoria, BC. It's currently sunny outside and we had a, a really nice Canada Day yesterday. So that's like our Independence Day here. So we were off, uh, but back in the office and, and ready to get going again. So uh, with that, I would like to introduce uh, McKay. McKay is uh, Director of Content and Communications at Converza. He has spoken at marketing events across North America, including SMX, Social Media Strategy Summit, LeedsCon, Content Marketing, Conf uh, sorry, Content Marketing Conference, and SES. And he's definitely a really uh, a good presenter, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy uh, what he has to say. Uh, McKay has authored articles in Search Engine Journal, Mobile Marketer, Mobile Marketing Watch, Target Marketer, Search Engine Watch, and Social Media Examiner. He has placed content on MSNBC, Forbes.com, and even the Salesforce blog. He has been hailed as a marketing Jedi and one-man lead generation powerhouse by Direct Marketing News. Uh, and previously, McKay was a news anchor and two-time Emmy-nominated news reporter for ABC affiliate in uh, Salt Lake City and Spokane. Uh, he holds a BA in Communications and Political Science from BYU. So with that, I'll let uh, McKay take things over and uh, wow us about uh, why call generation is a bad measure of lead quality, which I can definitely uh, agree to because it's it's something that uh, uh, definitely shows some quality, but uh, it's not a great indicator of lead quality quality when you're dealing with calls. So so take it away, McKay. Thanks, Mike. Man, that introduction was quite something. I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to have you just follow me around and just read that whenever I walk into a room, perhaps. I'm not sure. Sounds um, good. 
<laughs> All right, good enough. Well, thanks for having me, Mike. Thanks again to Ring Partner. Um, we've done a few of these webinars together. They've spoken on some, we've spoken on some, and they're a really great, great opportunity for us to um, really dig into phone call data and, and talk about calls, uh, which is why you're all here today. So let's jump right in. He read most of this, so I won't read it again. You will know uh, that Converse is a new brand name for us. We were formerly Log My Calls, uh, which you probably heard of. We rebranded last month. I guess it's now July, so we branded two months ago in May. Uh, and so we're, we're newly Converza from Log My Calls. You will no longer see our smiling, happy little beaver or our, our logo there. So uh, we're now Converza. That's who we are now. Um, this is my family. I'm a dad of uh, two boys. Uh, you, they're, they're best buds. They help each other out. And uh, one is four. One is almost two. So uh, that is most important thing to me. All right, let's talk about Converza real quick just to get set the scene here for why we have a little bit of expertise in this space. So we're a call marketing optimization company. We're really trying to redefine what has traditionally been the call tracking space where basically you plug a number somewhere and you can see how, how uh, which campaigns, ads, etc. generate those calls, produce those calls, and then you can uh, you know, uh, track the duration. That's what call tracking has been for 20 years. We're trying to get away from that. So we're really trying to define ourselves as a call marketing optimization company that does three things. The first is attribution. So which sources, channels, campaigns, affiliate publishers, keywords, et cetera, generate phone calls, and which don't. So you marry a specific phone call to a specific source and even a specific phone call to a specific caller. That's important, obviously. Uh, so we generate that traditional attribution data that call tracking has done for a long time. The second thing we do is we actually provide deep analytics. So you notice the, the A theme, attribution and analytics. Um, we analyze the words and phrases of phone calls to extract deep data from the calls. You see a, a, an auto insurance example here on your screen um, where Jack makes a phone call. He says, I need a quote on my BMW. My wife and two teens drive the car. Well, our system takes those words, runs them through our conversation analytic engine, and pulls out all sorts of data. We give you a lead score for every phone call, tell you whether or not there was a missed opportunity for every phone call, uh, give you a conversion value for every phone call. In other words, did it result in the goal that you were trying to get from that phone call? So this allows visibility throughout the process, whether you're a, an affiliate, a lead buyer, a lead aggregator, uh, or a publisher, or somebody else along the way, you can have full visibility into whether or not these calls are converting, whether or not they're good leads, whether or not they're bad leads. And uh, just a significant amount of data is available within those phone calls, and, and we didn't feel like that data was being leveraged appropriately. And then the, uh, just to further explain this, essentially the way this works is we use some pretty, pretty sophisticated speech recognition technology upon which we've layered literally millions of algorithms that rip the call apart. Those calls are processed, put through our system, and we extract that data in near real time. So you're, you're able to really get, as I said, significant visibility into the phone call. The third A is automation. So workflow-based marketing automation for phone calls. This is something that if you're a, a marketer, you're familiar with, with tools like Marketo and HubSpot for your online marketing efforts. But there really hasn't been and isn't anything available in the call space that does the same thing, where you say, okay, if this happens, then do this action. Whether it's send an email, send a text message, uh, send a uh, workflow to the CRM, or even send a bidding update to your bid management platform. If you use Kinshu or Marin or Aquizio or a tool like that, that you can actually update your bids on. Um, our system will allow you to do that uh, with integrations that we've built with those bid management systems and with CRMs, but also within our actual platform, it, uh, the automation is baked into it. So it's rules-based marketing automation for the phone. So just think HubSpot, Marketo style automation for phone calls. Very unique in the space. No one else does that. All right, let's talk about call duration, now that you know a little bit about who we are and, and what we do. So call duration, uh, you all, if you're in the call space, you're probably t pretty familiar um, with the, the logic behind it. Um, most calls, and Mike can correct me here if, if, I'm, if I'm deviating from the truth at any point, um, generally, I mean, there's a lot of companies that do it a lot of different ways, but 
Most companies do billable calls that are over 90 seconds or 120 seconds. It's different depending on the industry. There are certain industry standards if you're in for-profit EDU or if you're in healthcare or if you're in insurance. And this is sort of the way it's always been done. The value of phone calls is typically affixed directly to duration. And this is okay. Uh, as Mike said, it's, it's an A method to determine lead quality, but certainly shouldn't be the only. However, sadly, it is the only for many, and I would even say most, people who are doing a significant amount of call-based marketing. They're basing the value of phone calls solely on duration. Um, and this is relatively simple and unsophisticated. Imagine if web marketers extracted the value of their leads in that way. It wasn't based on the amount of information received. It wasn't based on the interactions or the behavior once they were on your website. It was simply based on how long they were on a website. That would be a really poor measure of how well that uh, web lead was performing and how good that web lead was. And our message is it's sort of similar for phone calls. Duration is a factor, but it is not the only factor. So what's bad about that? Well, it's pretty archaic, and as I said, compared to web analytics, not a very good measure of anything. Um, because of duration and limitations with duration, only having only one piece of data, there's really no data about the call itself. You don't know what happened on the call. And then you're reliant on a single metric. And any data-driven marketer or data scientist will tell you that relying on a single metric to determine if something is working or not is a dangerous proposition because you don't know the errors that take place with that data set, number one. And number two, it's a really simple model. Uh, a simple model sometimes can... It, it's good to be simple, but you shouldn't be too simple, right? So it's not a very good model to determine lead quality, plus it can be misleading. And then most companies don't track conversion rate or lead quality based on different durations. So there's no correlation there. They just sort of assume that calls over two minutes are valuable, whereas calls under two minutes are not, or calls over five are more valuable than those that are over two. Well, that's not necessarily the case, as our data has, has found. So let's talk real quickly here um, about a case study relating to duration. So uh, we work with a, a number of large publishers in the call space, and uh, this large publisher was generating millions of billable calls per month. They're a large publisher. You will, you, you would have, you know who they are, um, and they base their billing off of calls that are over two minutes long. So their clients depend on them to generate calls that are over two minutes long, and their whole business model is based on this. So to get them to even start analyzing phone calls and say, well, maybe duration isn't the end-all, be-all of their billing system was a big deal, right? Because that's what their whole system is based on. Their whole system is, is entirely focused on calls that are over two minutes. So what they started to do, they, they onboarded with us. We started analyzing calls through Converge's platform. We analyzed a lot of calls over a period of several months. So we had a really good data set. And one thing we've learned with data sets, by the way, is we can analyze millions of phone calls, but ironically, and any statistician will tell you this, you can actually get just as much good data from a, a sample size of phone calls, four or 5,000 calls, as you can from millions of phone calls. You just need a statistically significant sample. So here in the U.S., obviously, we have the, you know, the, the, uh, the races, the political races that are, um, I think there are about 45 people are running for president at the moment in 2016. So you'll start to see these polls come out. And you'll have people, I have friends say, well, they never ask me, how do they, uh, well, that's not the way statistical significance works, right? You just need a large enough sample to make sure that it's accurate. And so, you know, we can analyze 40 million phone calls, but it still will be just as accurate as analyzing a few thousand phone calls and getting a statistically significant sample. So anyway, long story short is we had a, a very large sample for this, this client. And we learned a couple of things. First, we learned about percentage of silence. We learned that about 30% of their calls over two minutes had a percentage of silence that was over 50%, which meant in most cases the client was on, or the, the, the prospect, the caller was on hold. So the call was over two minutes, and yet in many cases that two-minute call was really about 40 seconds of actual talking. Well, you have no, that, that's a, that's, extraordinarily inaccurate if you're just basing it off duration. You're getting about a third of your phone calls that you have no idea if they're good or not because they haven't even talked to the person. 
So there's an inherent flaw we found in their entire billing model and in their entire duration-based model. So what they did was they actually developed a metric for percentage of silence that was acceptable to them. And I forget what that was, but let's say it's 18%. 18% silence on a phone call is acceptable, but 38% is not. And it may be slightly different for each industry and business model, and we can calibrate our system to, to uh, weed out those, uh, those deviations. But long story short is, based on percentage of silence alone, they quickly determined that duration was not a good measure, and yet they were basing their entire billing model off of duration. Second was call spam. And I think Mike could attest to this. Call spam is becoming a significant problem in any call-based industry. Yeah, so, d definitely. Uh, I mean, it, it's becoming a massive issue. Mc McKay. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Please sorry, I, expound on that if you can. I, I, you may you may get into this a little bit more, but one of the things that we see more and more is is robocalls coming through, and it's interesting that you kind of mentioned uh, politics uh, shortly before, but uh, it got me thinking about uh, about that as a as an ongoing thing that seems to be growing pro uh, growing problem. So I, I assume you'll touch on that a little bit, but it's definitely something that we're seeing more of and and working with. You know our tra call tracking platform to kind of uh, combat that as well. So, absolutely. Well, and it, I, I think you you hit on every salient point there. I mean, you're talking about basically two issues in in, in our experience, Mike. Is mm -hmm. number one, you have robocalls, and number two, you just have plain spam calls. You have right. people who are trying to game the system, and that's that's not as common as it used to be, I don't think. But as paper call continues to expand. What's the saying, right? If, if you have an industry that is making money, a growing industry, you're going to have people start to target that industry for quick money-making schemes or for scams. Yeah. And that's what you have happening here. Absolutely. Um, and then you could probably throw uh, incentivized in there as well, although uh, incentivized traffic is a little bit more of just poor quality because uh, some, right. some advertisers will accept it. But it's something that at Ring Partner we've just decided to move away from. Uh, it just doesn't seem to deliver good quality calls in the long term. So. Right. Well, that, that's a great point. You have, you have all these factors combining to really add a significant number of calls to call spam. And so this company that was strictly basing off of duration, they had no way literally to track the number of spam calls that were coming through, whether via robocalls, um, incentive-based calls, or, or just plain gaming the system calls. So they were getting a significant amount of poor data back to their clients and for their own marketing purposes, right? They were, they were making poor marketing decisions based on data that wasn't accurate uh, because they were only basing off duration. Um, and and I, wanna be, I wanna say here too that of course every company has safeguards built in, even if they're not tracking, even if they're tracking only duration, right? They say, well, our call center um, can determine how many calls are junk or our locations that we're selling calls to or our sellers will tell us how many are junk. That's probably true over a period of time, but it's not going to give you data in near real time, right? You're not going to be able to quickly, within a day, judge a specific affiliate campaign publisher, et cetera, and say with total accuracy they're producing good calls or they aren't producing good calls. You're going to have to wait for those leads to go through the call center cycle or the location-based cycle before you determine whether those calls are good or not. And that's not, it's not efficient at all and certainly not scalable. So there's a... Uh, there's a big, big problem with those two factors. Um, and then lead quality score. Here's a few, uh, few things we learned. Number one, in theory, call length should correlate to lead score, right? I mean, that's the whole theory. The longer the call is, the greater the lead score should be. So I should back up saying and, and say this. The way that our system calculates, calculates a lead score, excuse me, is we give you a lead score between 0 and 100 for every single phone call. The higher the lead score, the better the lead is, and the more likely that lead is to convert to revenue. And I'll explain that more fully in a moment. But in theory, if duration is a good thing, the higher, the longer the call, the higher the lead score should be. Now that was the case in most cases, but not in all cases. And so judging off duration alone, you would have significant statistical deviation when it, in, in terms of lead score. You had calls that were long, that were poor leads, you had calls that were one minute and 10 seconds that were great leads uh, that converted. And so it was not always the case that, uh, that calls over two minutes were much better leads than calls under two minutes. In, in fact, the calls under two minutes on average had nearly the same lead score as the calls over two minutes. Now there were some deviations in 30 second increments, but long story short is duration had something to do with lead score, 
but not a ton to do with lead score. And I'll get into that more in a moment. So our, our thesis here, our, our whole point, is that duration by itself is not a good indicator of lead quality. There are simply other more important things that happen on the phone that are better indicators of lead quality. So here's a few of the factors that fall into the, our, our algorithms for lead scoring. These are not all of them, and I won't get into a ton of detail here because it's sort of our secret sauce and what we're building our whole value proposition around. But here are a few of the factors that we use to determine if a call was a good lead or a bad lead or a mediocre lead. First is duration. Duration is still important. It still matters. It's a, it's a part of our algorithm. The second is whether or not it was a sales inquiry. And we determine that again with our speech recognition technology that can determine, okay, was this person calling for directions? Uh, were they calling because it was a wrong number and a hang up? Were they calling because they had questions on a prior, prior service? Uh, or is this actually a sales inquiry? Third is then they make a price request. Did they ask for a price? Fourth is the depth of the sales process. Were there questions going back and forth? Was there a dialogue going back and forth about the product or service? Caller sentiment. This is essentially, was the caller excited? Were they happy to be on the phone? And our system can determine that with great accuracy. Was there objection language? Were there objections thrown up in the sales process? Anybody who's been in sales or, or been on sales phone calls knows what those, those objections sound like, right? Um, there's excuses being made about why the purchase can't be made, uh, and our system tracks that language. Additionally, is there negative emotion from the caller? So was the caller at any point upset? Did they seem angry? Uh, were they frustrated? Or were they even sad or down about the process? Our system can determine this, and that's a factor in lead scoring. Also, buying signals. Did they say things prior to buying that indicate that they will buy? And then were they willing to share personal information? We found that the more personal information someone shares, the more likely they are to buy. Uh, and so that's a factor in our leads quality, quality scoring metrics as well. And again, these are not the, this is not all encompassing, but these are a few, a few of the factors that our system extracts. So lead score is great, but does it actually produce more revenue? So in other words, does a high lead score actually generate additional revenue? Is there a statistical correlation there? And I want to spend a little bit of time on this next slide because this is sort of the crux, if you will, of our argument, that lead score matters. So you're going to see on the left, in the left-hand column, lead score. As I said, we track between 0 and 100. On the right, you're going to see conversion percentage. And what do I mean when I say conversion percentage? What I mean is this, that the call resulted in the goal of that call. The goal was achieved. So perhaps your goal is a reservation being made on the phone. Perhaps your goal is actual payment language being shared and something being purchased. Perhaps your goal is a follow-up appointment or a phone appointment. Or if it's a location-based industry, come into our business or we'll be out to your house if it's a home services industry, right? Um, or a follow-up phone call in the for-profit EDU space. Things like that are, are follow-up actions. And then... The fourth is planned purchase. So this is maybe in bigger ticket items. So, for example, in the B2B space, there's very little um, in the space we're in purchasing done over the phone, but it's we'll send you a contract. Uh, if our system hears language like that, it can determine there was a conversion. So long story short, conversion is did the goal that you wanted to achieve on the phone call happen? Did the goal Was the goal achieved? So you can see on the right side, the conversion rates for various lead scores. So you'll notice if a lead score is between 0 and 29, this is, by the way, I should say in terms of sample size, this was analyzed from 5,500 phone calls across all of our industries over a period of a couple of months. So this data is statistically significant and statistically valid um, from that perspective. Um, some industries, I should say, are going to deviate from this, right? We didn't do a specific industry test, but some industries are going to skew differently on this chart. So you notice between 0 and 29, the conversion rate is 0. So these are people perhaps who um, were on hold for a, a long time. Maybe they were calling because they had a question about a product or service that they had had in the past. Between 30 and 39, you have a close rate of 4%. So 4% of the calls between 30 and 39 resulted in revenue. 21% between 40 and 49 resulted in revenue. So you have a big jump there. 
50 and 59, 41% close rate, 60 and 69 is 67% close rate, and this is when it starts to get substantial. Really between 60 and up is when we would say there's a good lead on the phone. 80 and up is a great lead on the phone. Those are people who have the decision made before they called to buy. So if you get a lead score between 80 and 89, that person's going to close at 97%. Now here's why this is valuable. Number one is it's a far more accurate, far more accurate um, model than duration. So if you get to fix a lead score to every phone call, that could change the way that you bill or the way that you pay out. Um, imagine if you had a price affixed for phone calls between 80 and 89 or between 80 and 100 and a different price for phone calls between 60 and 79 and a different price for phone calls between 30 and 59 and no price for calls between 0 and 29. That changes your whole billing model. It makes the system far more accurate for everyone through the process. Imagine if you're a publisher, you're going to be incentivized dramatically to produce calls between 80 and 100. And I'll bet you that your lead buyers are going to pay you far more for those phone calls because they're almost a guaranteed close. So they're going to pay you a lot. They might even pay you more than the, uh, than the first month's, uh, if it's a monthly service, they might pay you more than what the call's worth on a, uh, on a billable uh, duration scale. Um, the other thing that's important to note here is you can actually, of course, track this and correlate this back to, to a specific um, lead um, generating activities, that's the word. So, for example, if you've got a specific AdWords campaign that is generating calls that are between 50 and 59 on average, but then you've got another campaign that is generating calls between 70 and 80, well, you know where to spend your money, but only if you have that data. So there's a significant number of ways to use this data to leverage uh, or, or as I said, judge publishers and affiliates based on this. There's a lot of ways to use this data to leverage how much money you can make. That's what it's all about, right? Making more money from these phone calls. And so this, yeah, we've, done the, we've run this data. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. So, sorry, I was just going to say how huge and important that would be uh, for like a company like Ring Partner where we have a ton of publishers and sometimes advertisers are very happy with the calls. Uh, but initially, the, the quality feedback we get is we're getting really long calls from this publisher. Can you send us more of those calls? But that isn't necessarily an indicator of a good quality or actual calls that are turning into sales, especially for a business that has a longer sales cycle. So that's uh, really interesting to be able to uh, track that back to the source, the, the affiliate or the you know AdWords campaign or the AdWords ad group or specific keyword. So that's really uh, insightful information to have. So. Uh, that's cool to see that you guys yeah, have that. Yeah, you know what? We have clients doing some really amazing things with it. As I said at the start, we talked about automation. <clears throat> let's just, use, for example, let's say you're talking about a specific ad group within AdWords. Let's say ad group A is producing calls that are between a 60 and 69 lead score on average, and ad group B is producing calls that are a 70 to 79 uh, lead score average. Um, because of our integrations with bid management tools like Aquizio and Marin and Kinshu, what we can do <clears throat> is you can set up rules within those platforms that say, okay, um, if 30% of my calls from this specific ad group have a lead score above 80, I want you to increase the bid by 6% mm -hmm. automatically. So you can set those rules up beforehand within those systems, and this data simply flows in and feeds that machine and allows you to automatically adjust your bid management on the fly, which saves you time and money to... Uh, just a, a massive degree. Yeah, well, it's um, huge, especially for something like Google where uh, we're limited to just duration. Uh, so, you know, that's a, that's exactly. a huge, huge thing and a, definitely a competitive advantage for uh, someone that's using that. Yeah, totally. It's a definite competitive advantage. The other thing that I would mention as well is, well, I'll get into this in a moment. Let me go to the next slide because I want to make sure I follow my specific order here. So what we're saying, I want to be clear here, because sometimes when we, like at LeedsCon last year, we talked about duration, and we had a lot of people angry at us because we said, they thought we said, well, duration doesn't matter. Well, duration does matter, so don't misunderstand what we're saying. Um, and, and I think the industry is so married to duration that it's, it's hard when you hear that uh, your, your baby's ugly, right? Um, duration is not unimportant. However, it is only one factor in determining the quality of a phone call. And yet almost, I don't want to say the entire, but almost the entire industry bases billable calls off of duration. So it's a big deal, right? Duration is a part of it, but not the only part of it. 
and uh, that's our, our simple message. So here's, here's uh, the other question, too, that people often ask is they say, okay, well, I, I, I use Ring Partner or I use maybe even another call tracking provider, a call analytics company. How do I engage with you guys because I want this data? There's a lot of ways. So I want to be clear, we're not a paper call company. You can't do payouts from our system. You can't bid from our system. That's not the way our systems work. We don't want to be that. We're an analytics and automation company. That's what we are. We help you to optimize. So call tracking. We can provide you the numbers. You can still use Ring Partner or anybody you want to use. That's the first way. Layering is another way. So if you are using someone else and you say, you know what, I don't want to change, that's fine. Layer our deep analysis and automation on top of your current provider. So you can get this data on top of what you're currently doing. There's, a, there's, a, there's lots of simple ways to do that. Perhaps the most simple is to um, just via, the, via our API um, send us those recordings programmatically. Our system will then analyze them and provide you that, the data in a way that you can consume it. So whether it's literally like low-tech, like here's some spreadsheets, um, or here's a login to our dashboard to the high-tech automation end with like maybe you don't even see the data on a dashboard. It just automatically feeds back into your systems, your marketing automation tools, your CRMs, your, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for, your paper call tool, uh, whatever. So we can push that data anywhere uh, quite easily. So if you don't want to switch something out, just layer us. Uh, it's probably easier to get the numbers from us, but it's not hard to layer us on top of what you're doing. Um, and then also just you know, asking people as you buy, sell calls, as you talk to people in the industry, if they have these metrics. Because if you're basing solely, if you're basing your billing solely off duration, gosh, imagine how, more value, how much more valuable this data could be. Um, so just we need to start talking about this within the industry because it, it'll, it's going to dramatically change the entire call marketing world uh, once this data becomes widely used and accessible. Um, so uh, this is the future of lead scoring, right? Web marketers have had this for ages. They've had lead scoring that is very in-depth, very detailed, very specific, and it allows them to make better decisions. Call marketers are us still using duration. Um, there's better ways to do it. The future of call lead scoring is here, uh, and we hope that uh, you take advantage of it. So any questions, and we'll, uh, I'm happy to take those. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, thanks, McKay. Uh, so actually, one of the questions that I had that just kind of popped up when you were talking about uh, lead scoring there, um, I've seen this in the lead generation space where they brought in lead scoring, uh, and then it almost became too good, uh, where it actually killed some of the volume and some of the profitability for uh, different publishers and, and advertisers in the space. Have you guys run into that at all, where uh, the advertiser ends up not wanting very many of the calls at all, and so it's un unprofitable for the publisher uh, to kind of run the campaign. No, there are, there are some, uh, well, let, let's, I guess there's two answers to that. The first is, the overarching answer is no. Like on, on the whole, the vast majority of people find this beneficial. It is the publishers and the affiliates that are producing garbage that are scared of it. Mm -hmm. um, Naturally, right? So, like, we literally were talking to an agency the other day, and they said, well, I think this just gives our clients too much visibility into what we're doing. Right. And I, I guess that's if – you're, if you're frightened of your quality, then, yeah, I guess um, it's probably a negative for you. But if you're confident and, – and really what we're seeing is on the, on, the, on the buyer side, the lead buyer side, right? We're having advertisers say to the people down the, the pipeline, you don't have a choice. We want this data. So if, if we, you know, the large for-profit EDU or we, the large advertiser, are going to buy calls from you, you have to provide this data to us. Right. Otherwise, we're not going to buy the calls. Yeah. So, you know, it's becoming more of a, I don't want to say mandatory, but it's becoming from the top down. The people who actually spend the money to make the whole system work, right, who buy the calls, they're the ones saying, we need this data to make better decisions. We're right. spending too much money. Um, so... I think, there's pro I think you're probably right to a point, Mike. I think there's probably some people down the pipeline who are like, oh, I'm scared of this. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the people that are spending the money are the ones who want it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool. Uh, here's another one uh, kind of uh, in the same realm. Uh, what if advertisers do not want calls recorded or monitored based on sensitive information? 
that can be exchanged between the consumer and advertiser? Good question. So there's two answers to that, and generally we deal with this in the legal space and, of course, in the medical space, right? Um, and sometimes in the financial services space, though, there's a, we have a lot of mortgage guys that are our clients and a lot of insurance guys. So we can do two things. Number one is we have a security and roles-based system, so we meet all the compliance and federal regulations both in the U.S. and Canada that, um, for both call recording as well as security of call recordings. So, so only certain people can access the information. Uh, it's very gradated in terms of hierarchical access to the calls. Um, and then the second thing, you can actually have, so in other words, you can block access to everybody. So like literally no one could even access the call recordings. You just get the raw data um, out the back end. The other thing that you could do is you could actually programmatically delete calls from the system if you wanted to record them and give people access for a period of time. So there's several ways to work around that, and, and um, I can understand that concern, and we get that concern, I don't want to say frequently, but it, you know, a decent amount of time. Yeah, um, I can see that coming up. But, sure. but there are ways to easily overcome, overcome yeah. that. Okay. Uh, another one here is about voicemail. Uh, can you detect for a voicemail? Yes, we can. And that is actually a another example that I probably should have included on that uh, problems with call duration slide is, yeah, voicemail is something we can detect, and we don't include voicemail in our overall analysis. So like that 5,000 calls that I showed you this data on a moment ago, mm -hmm. um, we don't include voicemails in that, so like in this data, for example. So yes, we can detect voicemails, um, and we ensure we built our algorithms in such a way that it does not skew the data that you're seeing within your system. Right, and and so with with something like that, so for for Ring Partner, a lot of times we deal with multiple buyers. Uh, so we'll have a single campaign that multiple buyers are are buying those leads. Is there a way to uh, send those calls back, or once it's hit the voicemail, that's it, it's gone? Yeah, are we, I mean we can. Let me see. When you say send them back, tell me what you mean exactly, Mike. Uh, like send them sure. back into to the system to to go to a different advertiser or go to a different uh, buyer for for better monetization. No, I mean, basically. you could you could actually programmatically probably build that. We don't have anything built like that out of the box, I guess I should mm -hmm. say. But you certainly could with that recording or with that data programmatically send it back into whatever system you want to send it to. Um, but it's not something that's out of the box into the system. Right. Um, you could you could create custom indicators, we call them, that would give those that would f more clearly delineate the voicemails as well, which would allow you to make better decisions. But yeah, you can clearly delineate them now, and you can um, you can send them back programmatically. It's just not something that's out of the box. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, we got another one here, just about spam calls. Uh, you mentioned a couple examples. Uh, do you have any others that you could share? Uh, just kind of try to get an idea of, you know, what types of spam calls there are out there. Yeah, you would probably know more about spam calls than I do. All I know is this: that we have clients that are calling us, and so with our new platform, we actually have developed a because it was such a problem we were hearing from so many clients. We have actually developed a series of spam call filters, hmm. um, everything from blacklisting numbers, um, you know, calling I, caller ID numbers that come in, because what we find is that a lot of spam calls just use the same robocall numbers over and over and over again. So you right. block those numbers programmatically and you, um, you solve a, a fairly large percentage of the problem. Right. So blocking numbers is a big part of it, blacklisting those numbers, but then also with the percentage of silence factor. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll have those calls and they'll just stay connected and nothing is said. And right. So the percentage of silence indicator that we track is a big part of that as well. And then the other factor, the other factor is also lead quality. So simply um, treating calls that have a lead score below 10 or 20 as a spam call is another way to track it. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of a lot of ways to do it there. Right, so kind of grouping Any others them. Add to that? I mean, like I said, you probably know more about that than I do. Frankly. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the big one is, is the robocalls, obviously, and then, like I kind of mentioned, is the incentivization. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't right now think of, of many others, but you kind of and end up grouping those as poor mean, quality. I mean, somebody well, saying... When you say incentivization, you mean somebody trying to game the system and make money they shouldn't be trying to make. Basically, yeah, so saying, you know, uh, call up and I'll give you five bucks if you stay on the line for over two minutes, which is when the, right. the campaign pays out, right? So that's a 
a big problem. And, and in some cases it works with like a soft incentive where it's like, you know, you can get so many uh, coins for some, some app or game or something, but in the end it, it, it doesn't end up working out well for, for anybody. So it's something that at Ring Partner we just avoid. Um, yeah. And this is this is from uh, my own sort of curiosity. Is you're you're scanning for keywords within conversations, correct? Like when you're listening, I don't know if you really dug into that in too much detail, but that's essentially what you're doing is listening to the conversations and pulling out keywords. Like, did somebody say cre credit card or or purchase or um, that sort of stuff, correct? Yeah, that's one of the things it's based off of. Is we we look for certain keywords in sequence. Um, and so, yeah, the easiest way to explain it is um, uh, probably the example of someone paying with a credit card, right? So you hear the phrase credit card, you hear a series of numbers in sequence, and then you hear like a confirmation number going back to them with a series of numbers in sequence. Mm, right. So we, we look for certain words in, in order. The way I explain the analysis, too, is let's say my wife calls me and says, hey, um, can you grab some milk on the way home from work? Um, and then she talks about her day for a few minutes, and then, then we hang up. Mm -hmm. I probably will not be able to give, not a probably, I won't be able to give you a word-for-word -word verbatim transcript of that phone call. But I will get the gist of the call, hopefully, or she'll be angry at me, that I need to stop <laughs> and get milk on the way home, right? So right. that's the way our system works. Um, we're accurate well over 90, 93% on a per-call basis in terms of determining the gist of the phone call, um, what happened on the call. That's our goal. Yeah. Um, we don't care if we get every single word right. We just want to know what happened, yeah. and uh, that's that's what we're really really good at. I, I think that's a really interesting sort of analogy. I can that's something I can really understand. Understand is you know you may not <laughs> right. listen to the whole conversation, but you pull out of the important parts and and you you can take the action that's required. And hopefully you didn't forget anything. So that's a I exactly. relate to that analogy. Exactly. Um, okay, I uh, got one more question here, and then I just got a couple sort of uh, notes to bring up, but. Uh, do you have the ability to detect the same person, same sort of voice, calling multiple times and flag it as fraud or potential fraud? Not from a voice perspective, but from the, the phone number's perspective, yes. Mm. Um, so no, not from the voice. Um, you know, it, it wouldn't be able to tell the difference between two people, but it would be able, to, obviously, to marry the specific phone number um, to the the numbers that you could associate as spam. And yeah. the other thing you could do is you would easily be able to, I mean, all you'd have to do is pull the data out into a spreadsheet and say, okay, we've gotten, you know, 20 phone calls from this number that have a lead score under 10. Well, obviously that's a spam caller and you can easily go in and manually right. block, blacklist that number. So, yeah. Right, right. So, yeah, it's a, it's a low quality. I mean, that's really what it boils down to is whether it's a spam call or a, or a great call, it's high quality or low quality. So it's not necessarily, you know, whether it's specifically spam or, or fraud or incentive. It's just low, low quality, and we don't want those calls. So let's find a way to block them. Right. Um, okay. Well, I mean, that sounds, uh, you know, uh, uh, pretty interesting. So I, I had a couple kind of notes as you were as you were presenting, and um, – one of the things that we do is uh, set all of our campaigns for a connect duration versus just a raw duration. Uh, so there's some challenges around that. Publishers don't necessarily understand what that means. So basically, we're not starting the clock until they're through the IVR that's on our side. So we may ask them a few questions before we actually send it on to the um, advertiser versus a raw duration, which would start right when the call started. And so this kind of overlaps uh, as an ongoing issue with Google AdWords. So if someone's running a campaign and it pays out on a connect duration, which say it pays out after 90 seconds, you would probably set that up in AdWords as 90 seconds to track uh, the duration of the call, but you forgot about the, you know, 10 to maybe 20 seconds that's in the IVR, so the actual duration uh, is a little bit longer. So that's sort of an ongoing issue um, that you know there there, there isn't currently uh, a, an easy solution with AdWords anyway to correctly, excuse me, track track the uh, performance of the campaign right on AdWords. So I mean, it sounds like you guys have a solution with uh, using some of the the other tools like Kenshu and. And things, but that's something that's kind of an ongoing issue. And there's no question there. It's just sort of got me thinking uh, about you know duration and uh, how yeah. to do a better job of it. And especially when it comes to you know buying any type of ad space, any type of uh, paying for clicks or calls or whatever it is. So um, 
Yeah, there's there's a ton of especially with when you're talking about calls generated via um, Google uh, paid search. Man, there's a lot of use cases in terms of how you could use this data. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You got me thinking. So, uh, and then the other thing I did right out of the gate that I started thinking about was when we get a, a new advertiser uh, starts on the platform uh, and starts running traffic, uh, they usually are basing it off of some like if they're new to to pay per call, they're usually basing it off of some other value, uh, which is a duration. So they might be getting calls from TV, and they know that everything that lasts 30 seconds is worth $50. Uh, but this is just a different beast, a different animal, a uh, different set of media. Or they might be doing, you know, radio or print or, or anything else. Maybe it's display traffic versus, um, uh, you know, pay-per-click or, dis or something else. So that's a real challenge when they come to us and say, hey, you know, every call that's two minutes is worth $50 and then set up a campaign and, and they're actually worth $30 or they're worth much more or something. So that valuation of duration from the start uh, kind of creates a bit of a challenge. So it'd be, it'd be just be better to have um, a better uh, way of determining the quality uh, of, of calls that's not duration. So as an industry, I think that we could all use something better. Right, and I think it, as you said, I mean, it's so ingrained, it almost requires, not almost, it requires a total sort of um, re refocusing or recalibration on what's important. Right, when you have you literally have people saying, hey, it's over two minutes, I, I need my money. Yeah. Like, well, it's garbage, so sorry. So yeah. there's 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 a whole mindset that needs to shift with it. I agree with you. For sure. And I, I think it's just one of the other things we have to overcome, and, and one of them dealing with just phone numbers have a limitation, and you know maybe some, one day we won't, won't have that issue, but I think that's a ways down the road. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, that kind of wraps it up for me. I don't know if you have any final notes, but before... Uh, that I just want to let everybody know that this recording will be up on our YouTube channel hopefully today uh, and watch for an email from us with the with the link to the recording uh, and be sure to follow Ring Partner on social media uh, on Twitter at Ring Partner uh, our YouTube channel youtube.com slash Ring Partner and Facebook facebook.com uh, slash Ring Partner uh, feel free to email us at contact at Ring Partner or since we are in the, the call business feel free to call us at 1-888-656 three seven two six and uh, yeah we'd love to hear from you especially feedback on the webinars or anything in general that uh, you'd like to know about the call space so I'll leave it to you McKay to kind of uh, plug Converza as well yeah thanks um, I think you know I said most of it during the presentation the, the real key that I want to stress is there's a lot of data in phone calls and you do have competitors using this data and so if you're not they have they have a significant leg up I mean, that's the bottom line and the other thing I would stress as well is that the people who actually make the, the people who spend the money in this space, the advertisers, the ones who are buying all these phone calls, they're starting to demand that this sort of data be available to them. And so it's, it's becoming more and more important. So if you want to engage with us, just shoot me an email. It's probably the best way to reach me. Um, and uh, if you have questions about anything or we host a webinar series of our own, I think Ring Partner is going to join us for a presentation later in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if any of you have, have uh, want to join us as a as a guest presenter, as a contributor, email me directly. That'd be great. So thanks again, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And if you're in the U.S., have a great uh, fourth. If you're in Canada, hope you had a great Canada Day yesterday. So thanks again, Mike. All right. Thanks a lot, McKay. And thanks everyone for joining. And we will uh, see you soon. Okay. Bye bye.